Okay, so let's dive into these three quotes that I love, which are, to be honest, more about life than they are about specifically relationships. But I think that it would be arbitrary to draw a distinction between those things and suggest that quotes about life and selfhood don't relate to our you know, intimate partnerships. So the first one is from James Clear, who is probably best known as the author of Atomic Habits, which is, you know, super best-selling book that you've probably seen everywhere and many of you will have read. But this quote from James Clear is, every action you take is a vote for the type of person you wish to become. No single instance will transform your beliefs, but as the votes build up, so does the evidence of your new identity. This is one reason why meaningful change does not require radical change. Small habits can make a meaningful difference by providing evidence of a new identity. I love this quote. Okay, I just have to pause before I keep talking. I'm recording this in my home office and the birds outside my window, they always give me a bit of grief, but today they are particularly noisy in their chirping. So I apologize. It is near impossible to remove from the recording. So hopefully it provides a nice ambience for those listening rather than an annoyance. But either way, my apologies for the bird noises. Okay, back to James Clear. So <laughs> every action you take is a vote for the type of person that you want to become. I love this concept. To me, it so beautifully articulates this idea of agency and self-responsibility and that we are what we practice, right? I love this idea that we are what we practice. So many of us have a really fixed view of ourselves. We say like, oh, I'm just this type of person or that thing's not possible for me. That can often be really restrictive and constrictive to our identity. Obviously this whole idea of a growth mindset is kind of softening those fixed uh, attributes that we've slapped on ourselves that keep us really small and stagnant. So I think that shifting into this way of looking at things that's like with every action that I take, I'm choosing what kind of person I want to be. I'm like clocking runs on the board and over time the sum total of all of those little choices is my identity, which is in this constant process of formation and reformation. Uh, I think this is such an encouraging idea for those of us who do struggle with low self-esteem or a lack of self-belief, realizing that you have so much power moment to moment to actually just just choose what kind of person do I want to be? What kind of person do I want to be today in this moment and the next one and the next one? And recognizing that as you gain momentum in those choices, um, you know, you're taking one step at a time, but maybe down a different path to the path that you've previously been on. And all of a sudden you'll look back and go, wow, I've taken a thousand steps down this new path and I'm actually quite a way away from where I started in the best possible way. So every action you take is a vote for the type of person that you want to become. It's a very powerful concept and one that for me is so in alignment with all of the things that I teach and talk about around self-responsibility and self-respect and self-worth, okay? Reminding ourselves what we are capable of, coming back to integrity, coming back to following through and making sure there is alignment between our, you know, values and our actions rather than just talking about things and never actually following through on them, okay? Okay, the second quote that I love is from Elizabeth Gilbert, who's also an author, and it is, you are afraid of surrender because you don't want to lose control, but you never had control. All you had was anxiety. I'm going to say that again. You are afraid of surrender because you don't want to lose control, but you never had control. All you had was anxiety. All right. I feel like that one deserves a bit of a mic drop. When I first heard it, my therapist actually shared it with me. I, it was very much on point, right? This idea that like, oh, I can't let go of control. I can't surrender. I can't just hand my life over to the universe and say, look, I'm going to choose to lead with trust. This idea of like, I can't let go of control because all of these terrible things will happen and reminding ourselves like, we don't actually have control. We just have anxiety. Okay. <laughs> and like that anxiety drives us to create an illusion of control in so many different areas of our lives, all of the ways that we grip and manipulate and try and 
play out every possible version of how something could happen so that we can plan how we'd respond and you know, all of the suffering that we cause ourselves just to create this semblance of control in the face of uncertainty when the reality is we never had control in the first place. We just had anxiety and that anxiety both prompts us to seek control, but it also our attempts at creating control just perpetuate the anxiety. So I think there is immense freedom. And again, I teach this a lot in actually just recognizing how little we have control over and letting that be a source of peace and surrender rather than fueling the anxiety. It's just, it doesn't make any sense to continually be at war with what is. And the reality is that we don't have control over the vast majority of things that are going on in the world, even that are happening in our lives, you know, our sphere of control is relatively limited compared to all of the things that we try to exert control over. So making peace with that, recognizing what your relationship to control is and asking, do I actually have control or do I just have anxiety? And my bet would be that it's the latter, right? We just have anxiety, not control. So in light of that, maybe we might try and take more steps towards surrender and peace and trust in, you know, the ebb and flow of life, recognizing that it doesn't really matter either way, um, because even if we try to control, it's not going to work. So <laughs> maybe if those attempts at control are just causing us stress and anxiety, uh, without having any efficacy attached to them, um, letting go might provide an alternative way of being that we could explore and play with. Okay. Now the third quote that I love is from Brene Brown. And this quote is around boundaries. And again, if you've been in any of my programs, I think I mentioned this quote in my boundaries masterclass. It is don't shrink, don't puff up, just stand your sacred ground. Okay. Now I'll say that one again. Don't shrink, don't puff up, just stand your sacred ground. So it's this idea of when we talk about boundaries, most of us by default will either shrink, get very small, or we puff up. We have this bravado or this aggression. And I've talked many times about that pendulum swing that oftentimes we go from having no boundaries to having very dictatorial boundaries where we want to tell everyone what they can and can't do and how dare you and you're violating my boundaries and you know, we don't really know how to find ourselves to a moderate place, a middle ground, a balanced approach to boundaries that actually is conducive to healthy relationships because the puffing up and the shrinking both exist at opposite ends of the spectrum. It's diffuse boundaries or it's rigidity uh, and neither of those tend to yield what we're wanting, which is, you know, I talked about this in a recent episode around boundaries. We want to be able to stay connected to self and connected to other and boundaries are a really powerful tool to allow us to do that, to facilitate that because it essentially communicates, here's what I need in order to feel safe while being connected to you. Right now, this idea of just stand your sacred ground. I think there's something really powerful and poignant in those words. It's very evocative, at least for me, um, you know, firm feet planted, really heart centered. I don't need to shrink. I don't need to make myself smaller to gain your approval or to hold on to a relationship or whatever it might be. I can stand firmly planted in my truth, in my dignity, in my integrity I can advocate for myself from that place, trusting that whatever flows from that is the right thing. Because how could being grounded in my integrity lead to the wrong outcome, whatever the wrong outcome might be? Again, I think we get so tied up in the right outcome is the one that I want. <laughs> and I think this loops back to our desire to control everything and other people and the world around us. So I think that learning to orient ourselves back to center go, okay, how can I advocate for myself in this moment? What do I need to say? Can I say it from my heart? Can I say it vulnerably, but with care and kindness? And then whatever flows as a result of that, even if the other person blows up and gets really defensive or even God forbid, a relationship ends as a result of it, what else could you have done, right? What else could you have done? You spoke from a true, honest, integral, heart-centered place. And that, that means that you save yourself so much possibility of regret because you, know, you didn't blow up at them, you didn't bite your tongue, 
you stood your sacred ground. And I think that's an incredibly empowering thing that is so conducive to inner peace. And again, really affords us more capacity for that surrender that we talked about in the previous quote around trust and control. So those are my three quotes that I wanted to share with you. I hope that you got something out of those. I hope that you like them, love them as much as I do, and that they've given you something to reflect on today as you go about your day, move about the world, that the wisdom that I've borrowed and shared from those wonderful teachers has given you what you need today, whatever that looks like for you. So thank you so much for joining me. A reminder again, if you want to be part of Healing Anxious Attachment, the upcoming cohort, jump on the wait list. There's obviously no obligation around the wait list. It just does get you that early bird pricing, which is only available to folks on the wait list. Okay. That's all from me guys. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you again next time. Thanks for joining me for this episode of On Attachment. If you want to go deeper on all things attachment, love, and relationships, you can find me on Instagram at stephanie underscore underscore rig or at stephanierig.com. And if you enjoyed this episode, I'd be so grateful if you could leave a review and a five-star rating. It really does help so much. Thanks again for being here, and I hope to see you again soon.